Good morning. I will be talking about my study, assessment of ultrasound as a diagnostic modality for detecting cervical spine fractures in acutely injured patients. We all know that early cervical spine clearance is extremely important in patients with head injuries and in all acutely injured patients. However, it may be very difficult to achieve in the emergency setting, especially in unstable patients. I personally have never seen a fiber optic intubation in the recess bay when the patient needs acute intubation. What we commonly see in our setup is intubation being done without cervical clearance. With this background in mind, our aim was to assess the usefulness of standard portable ultrasound in detecting cervical spine injuries in patients with acute injuries. We initially tried a posterior approach and uh, it is a well-known saying that what the eyes know that only a mind can see and when we go down this is beautifully seen cervical spine these are the posterior elements out here and these are the bodies and this is the cervical canal and uh, using ultrasound kept posteriorly it is very easy to see all this however it may not be possible in those patients who are not being cleared for cervical spine so we tried an anterior technique in, we put, in which we put the ultrasound anteriorly on the neck in the anterior triangle and this is to get an orientation you can see here that the cervical spine vertebra are seen very nicely as compared to the CT scan. This is the technique how we do now. We simply keep a new probe with the anterior triangle and the image is seen on the ultrasound machine. You can see where we are keeping the ultrasound and how the image is appearing on the screen. In fact, ligamental injury which is the most dangerous can be seen exquisitively on the ultrasound. Here we can see by just changing the depth and the image, the anterior longitudinal ligament very nicely and on this image we can see the bodies as we saw previously. This is of dysthesis in which we can see on the CT scan bilateral facet dislocation. On the ultrasound also we can easily see the dislocation with the ligamental tear. This is seen better when we mark out the two bodies. So we did a feasibility study on 10 patients with known cervical spine injury to see the usefulness of ultrasound. All ultrasounds were done by a neurosurgeon with only a basic knowledge of the ultrasound and no formal training. There were 7 patients with bilateral facet dislocation, 1 patient with C5 burst fracture and 1 patient with C2 listhesis. The cervical ultrasound could easily detect fracture lines, canal compromise and ligamental injury in all cases. To conclude, cervical ultrasound may be a useful tool for detecting cervical spine injury, especially in unstable patients and in resource scar scarred countries like India. Thank you so much.